Do dark forces, evil spirits and fallen angels use heavy metal as a tool to instruct vulnerable listeners to commit acts of blasphemy and nastiness? You may scoff at the idea, but in the 1990s dozens of churches were burnt to a crisp in Norway, and most of these crimes were linked to that country's black metal scene. With many, the finger was pointed directly at Varg Viganes, the man behind the Norwegian metal band Burzum. Varg is currently serving time behind bars for murdering a man named Eronymus from fellow Norwegian metal band Mayhem, the same band whose lead singer, Dead, had earlier blown his brains out. So is there a working relationship between the forces of darkness and metal? If there's Burzum, Black Sabbath or Slayer on the turntable, does it follow there's evil spirits in the room? Well, I wanted to clear this up once and for all. This is Andrew Haig and Tony Kachadurian. They buy the records, wear the t-shirts and host a weekly metal show on 3 R FM. Andrew even plays drums for metal band Contrive. If anyone's possessed, it's these guys. This is Ruth Wilson, who discovered her ability to see spirits whilst a member of the Australasian Spiritualist Church. Well, I work for the Archangel Michael. He's my, I guess, immediate boss. Do you believe that like music can have like negative forces and evil spirits? Most definitely, spirits? because it can have positive forces as well. Music can uh, raise your vibratory frequency or lower it. Listening to aggressive music for me is a, um, it helps me uh, vent my own frustration. I'll drive around in the car uh, listening to uh, music just blaring. And uh, for me, it makes me feel good. I'll walk out of the car and I'll, I'll, I'll feel a sense of ease. Do you believe in God? Do I believe in God? No, I don't believe in God and I don't believe in the devil. I apologise to my parents for that because they brought me up to believe um, that there is a God and that, you know, there is a devil. First, it's off to Tony's house. Ruth has brought along sketch artist Peter to put to paper what she sees in Tony and Andrew's heavy metal world. I just look at that and I go, well, I just go, yeah. It seemed to be going all secular and fine when suddenly... Now, don't go in that corner because I don't want you over there. I want you to come and stand over here because yeah. there's someone okay. over there. So we'll talk about them in a minute, OK? Yeah. Yes, we're getting negative emanations from all the equipment here, but it's what's gone on in here, as in the negativity of the music, the... Um, the actual music itself, because music leaves a vibration. So using the negative dark energy in, an, like in any sense you can describe what its physicality is to you? It feels like being in snot, but dark snot. Oh really? And, mm. and, and are you actually seeing it or just feeling it? I'm, I'm feeling it, more feeling I think. I'm, I can't see the snot. What I'm seeing is like a, a little huddled, huddled up dark mass in the corner with his head down and his knees crouched up sort of troll like you can't really see his his hands they're more like paws and a bit hairy on the back it's very interesting because he's very attached to that whole lifestyle thing and your your likes for the music and uh, how you work and what you do and you know, the clothes that you wear and things mm -hmm. like that. So you do have someone sort of hanging off your right-hand side a wee bit, especially. Do you have any troubles with your right shoulder at all, ever? I actually have some of the left. Oh, the left, OK. Oh, that's it. Well, maybe he's on the left side. No, 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 he's definitely there. I can see him. Yeah. Uh, but that's interesting. So it is the other shoulder. All right, OK. Are you right-handed? Yes, I am. Oh, so it's your right-hand side that I'm talking about. Sorry, I'm talking about my left. He's, he would be, have been around you for the last, oh, seven years at least. So I don't know when you got into all of the music type of thing. It would have started around seven years ago. I did feel that seven years ago was a, a time when he came in. OK. And, and he came in to, to, to join you and was attached to you then. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Had some tummy problems? No, not at all. Never have. No upset tummies? No. OK, because oh. I'm just getting some... In, some energy around your, your stomach area here. Having outed the troll who sleeps next to Tony's guitar, it was off to the Triple R Studios. Well, first of all, Tony's got his bloke attached to him, like we saw in his room. He, he's come along with him. I think he just sort of clings like a limpet to the side of him and holds on to his uh, right-hand side. So there's also someone around Andrew as well. And it's someone who's got their hands over his shoulders like this. 
and it sort of stands behind him. Greasy long hair, not as long as Andrew's, because Andrew's is really nice clean hair. And it's either someone he's known from a band that has passed over, very drug related passing is what I'm getting. But the other thing that I saw was from the ceiling panels, all these drippy black horrible thready things. He's the resident studio ghoul. I don't know whether you know him or whether you know who he may be, but I also see someone uh, who may have worked in here who was quite portly, quite chubby. Yeah. Yep. Big okay. tummy. Yeah. Yep. Mm. Who was that? Alan Thomas. Okay. And, and what, what did he look like? Uh, <coughs> Sorry, not I'm a very, very attractive net. man. Wow, that's freaky. You know, whenever I go home from here and you've been doing a session here in the studio, I would go home and have a shower and completely shower head to toe and then just envisage yourself standing or stepping into a pale blue balloon of light that will actually protect you. But you can ask your, your angels and your guides to actually rid you of any entities that are attached to you. But you've got to ask for that. The angelic forces are waiting to be asked. And you just go to bed before, you, just before you go to bed, you just pray for them to do that or? You can ask them any time. Oh, they're, really? they're eternally vigilant. Oh, okay. They're waiting around for a good job to do. Oh, okay. Very interesting. Then Ruth was off to the Tote in Fitzroy, Melbourne, where Andrew's band had a gig. host of um, passed over heavy metal dead rockers there as it gathered momentum so more of them came in next to the uh, control mixer he had his hand on the control as well it's as though he wanted to feed the volume as though he wanted to push the volume up up himself these dark spirits and these pair of people that were picking up on who were attached to the heavy metal they're they're trapped they may very well be just stuck in the toad hotel what a dreadful Dilemma. It's hell. If they were in my family, I'd be dragging them away, screaming and kicking from them. Did you know? Government officials in Keta, Malaysia, started a herbal medicine scheme to deprogram young heavy metal fans. Did you know, while editing that story, the equipment mysteriously broke down twice and exploded a third time? Spooky! 